Bomber Fabrication takes us on a trail that we've never done before, Sandthrax. You'll never guess who we found rolled over in the middle of the night, and at the end of the video, I somehow end up underneath a buggy in the middle of the soup bowl. Don't listen to Randy or don't follow Randy. Probably both, huh? <laughs> All right, so we haven't been able to ever do this trail before, so I'm pretty excited, but we're hitting Sandthrax today. We're with uh, Jason from Wheeling Wine and Whiskey. He's in Gold Digger with Randy Slauson. And then we got a couple of his buddies, and then we have us in Virgil, so should be good. Yeah, super awesome. In our previous video, we took Randy Slauson on a couple of my favorite trails, with one of them he had never done before. So today, he's either returning the favor or getting payback, bringing me on a trail that I've never done, Sandthrax. Ironically, it's been on my to-do list ever since my first time to Sand Hollow. None of us had done this trail but Randy, and he said he had not done it in years. So we've got three rear steers, two drag axles with us, and we're gonna see what happens. It didn't take long to get to the first obstacle. It looks like a decent crack that just dead stops right into a wall. Jess and Lenny go check out where the heck this crack is supposed to lead to and to find out where all of this noise is coming from. Oh, watch out, buddy. Yeah, I know. After turning the corner and seeing James in his buggy get swallowed into a hole, almost rolling him backwards on Jess and Lenny, Lenny decides it might be a good idea for him to turn around and ride to the top of the canyon and be chase truck in case any of us need some support. Lynch, please. James, right, you're getting you. rowdy. Huh? James is getting rowdy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, dude, I thought it was there. I dude, thought you were I there, but when he's lost in, it was game over. I know. I should have stayed higher left. Just to give you an idea of how sketchy it is to fall in a hole above a crack halfway up a waterfall is, that's me and the boys down there looking up from the bottom of the crack. My butt's puckering just looking at it. James got super close, but without having rear steer, it makes it super hard to do this line. Let me tell you, it takes some you know what's to take a new to you buggy up a line like this. Due to the pickle that he was in, we all agreed to give it the winch and not risk the far drop rollover. Randy, 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 Randy. Yeah. People are trying yeah, to climb this? I know. This obstacle starts off with a five foot crack in the beginning, which isn't a major deal until you realize you have to make a 90 degree turn out of it. Then just before your rears can get out of the crack, you have to line up and position your fronts on the next more vertical crack without having one of your rear tires fall in the first crack. Once you get your rears out and you fully mount the next crack, you then run into a wall. You have to pay attention to climbing the wall with also keeping your rear tires pinched in the crack as the fronts climb over it. Virgil with the 7X Toyota buggies, axles are over a foot narrower than mine, making it much harder to straddle the crack with his rear axle as he goes through the 90 degree turn. You can see his passenger rear fading into the crack, but somehow he manages to keep it from sliding all the way in. He then squares up to the second vertical crack almost perfectly. Right when his front tires reach the wall, he uses a sick move by putting it in front dig to slide the front axle passenger so he can go up the shoulder side of the wall. Having the tools to wheel is one thing, but knowing when and how to use them is everything. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. This obstacle is supposed to be the weird one. We're 
random weird stuff. This crack doesn't look like it would be crazy compared to some of the other cracks that we do on this channel, but it is. Let me tell you why. Most cracks are wider at the top and narrower at the bottom, allowing you to roll your way up as long as you keep the shoulders of your tires on each side of the crack. The beginning of this one is undercut. Undercut is where the top of the obstacle overhangs the bottom, so on approach, your tires get stuffed underneath the overhang, making it way harder to get up the obstacle. You can see exactly what I'm talking about if you look at my front driver's side tire. The line I took stuffed my tire way too hard into the undercut, so I had to back out and realign. I tried the opposite approach, putting my driver's side tire high and my passenger side low, and it was even worse. I decided to go back to the original line and try the force feed method. Pushing into the undercut while wiggling the front tires back and forth to get it to pop up. Although it worked, I didn't like it. You have to be careful when forcing up an undercut because it causes a huge amount of bind on all of your parts. Wiggling the steering wheel and not over throttling was key to getting the fronts up without breaking anything. Once my fronts are up, the rear would follow much easier due to not having all that water and engine weight like my front did. As long as I can get my tires on the same line as my fronts, then I'll be good to go. Once I get to the top, there was a cool overhang crack. Remind you, I've never done this trail. So I don't know where the proper lines are, but I thought driving the crack with a huge overhang above it was the obvious sick line. Well, have you ever seen a jacket that you really wanted but knew it probably wasn't going to fit but you still tried it on and sure enough, the zippers couldn't connect? Yeah, same thing here. I found out the overhang was too low when I hit my roof of the buggy. So instead I went the left line, which turned out to be just as cool. Because the way the face of the rock was, I turned both my front and my rear tires passenger and got to crab walk up it. That was interesting. I didn't know what the line was, and I'm not even sure if that was the line, but I did like it, and it worked. So it worked. Send it. Randy pulls up, and he gets the fronts up, and the rears bite off way too much traction, trying to lift out of the crack, pivoting the buggy, and almost slipping into the crack. Luckily, the guy's got race car reactions and turns into the crack really quick and it catches it last second. He throws it in the front dig, pulling the front axle back right where he wants it, does a quick adjustment to the rears and drives right through. It's always interesting to see how the wide axle guys do compared to the narrow axles. You never know what obstacle it's going to help you or hurt you on. As for this obstacle, it looked like it helped Virgil as he pulled up with little to no problems. James. Being in a new to him buggy and hitting lines that have shown technical for the rear steer cars, James definitely has his work cut out for him. If, if I front dig up to the left, I might be able to back up just a hair to get my tire out of this undercut and yeah, then work up. If this tire moved up just to, or to the right just a few inches, you should be able to skirt that. Without having rear steers to keep his rears out of the undercuts makes this line much harder and can get frustrating. All too often when people hit this line, if they don't get it the first couple tries, they give up. But the truth is, all hard obstacles take work and patience to figure out. James's hard work and patience pay off, and he somehow pulls this off with a drag axle car. Sit 
was that? I got it over just an inch. It went right off. What the hell happened there, Danny? Just like, I think I'm just gonna drive this now. Yeah, pretty like, much. <laughs> I, it was time to stop for the round. <laughs> she, she turned, she turned I was look looking at, at him, much. but the camera was looking at you, okay, so. Yeah. <laughs> I turned away and there you go. I just needed you to look away. That was okay. me. Sorry. I'm don't so, watch me. <laughs> if I start struggling, look away. Is this the last one? I don't. No, I don't think it is. I'm changing my tune. I don't think this is the last one. Okay. Don't listen to Randy. Don't I listen to Randy or don't follow Randy. I yeah, probably both, huh? <laughs> Big steep waterfalls like this drive best with momentum, but my style is always to try to crawl at first. This was a pain in the butt to crawl, and I struggled for a bit. Bronson's guilty, he tries to crawl everything. He's like, if I can crawl it, I like that better. He's got horsepower, but... If you didn't know already, Randy's style is fast. So he shoots right up it, showing us how you should do it if this was a race. Virgil's style is very calculated and he processes the obstacle and takes the best calculated line and uses all the tools to get up. In this case, he feathers the throttle, keeping the car at a crawl, but with just enough momentum to carry him to the top. James's style is keeping up with the rear steers at all costs and makes this line look easy. We have one more obstacle to complete before we finish the trail. This one is a lot like the first one. It has a crack that snakes back and forth with a rock stopper at the top. As we head through here, I can only think about how hard it would be without a rear steer to follow the crack without your axle falling in the massive hole while trying to climb that last rock stopper ledge. Try to get your front to skirt the sidewall so you're not pushing so hard into this and then come up like that and then over. It takes great cojones to be a drag axle running with the rear steers and this dude's been killing it today. All right, driver, driver. Low passenger, low passenger. Yeah, there you go, that's good. That's good. Okay, you're looking pretty okay. We were finally able to get him lined up on the crack, but when he would get to the rock ledge, AKA the rock stopper, it would either kick him off the crack or it would bind his front axle to the point where it was near breaking. The risk was not worth the reward on this one, so I put the camera down and moved my buggy so he could hook up and use his old trusty worn winch. We made it through the trail and now we're in a hurry to go catch some of the trail breaker. On the way we saw Philip with Talton off road. I'm not sure if he knew that we were racing, but let me tell you, I smoked him down the sand dunes. We made it to trail breaker just in time to catch a little bit of it. Trail breaker is an event where they only have the best drivers in the world attend. They map out the trail that is borderline impossible 
the one who makes it the furthest and fastest wins. If you complete the entire trail first, you not only win, but you get to name the trail. This year got a little weird, but only due to the crazy integrity of the drivers in this sport. Caleb Redden won the event, but later on saw that he had hit a flag that he was unaware of from a video that was going around online. He then forfeited his win to Jesse Haynes, who got second place if Caleb would have not barely tapped the flag. I'm not sure how it all played out in the end, but the moral of the story is these guys have insane amounts of integrity and will only take the win if they undeniably earned it. Just another example of how great the off-road wheeling community is. We went back to camp, grabbed some grub, and headed to the beach where Trail Hero hosted a live concert for the concert and then went out for our last night run at Trail Hero 2023. We went out with our rad local buddy Lee and some of his friends. We planned on taking it easy and not breaking anything. In wrecked gear fashion, we always race through Nasty Half Trail on the way to any of the other trails if possible. We got halfway through, as I'm hauling butt around the corner, I find myself in a weird position, looking straight up a skirt of a Jeep. Turns out it was Brad with Warren Industry winches. He got a little rowdy on the obstacle and we happened to come around the corner with perfect timing. Bad news is, earlier that day, I let my suck down winch out a little too far and pinched it off between a rock and the front of my axle. So I wasn't able to get the pleasure of winching Warren Industries out with a Warren Industries winch. But the good news is, I had my Factor 55 kinetic rope, which isn't made for this type of recovery, but luckily worked to get him back on all fours. We got him back over quick enough he didn't even have to pull the plugs. Started right up and they were back on their way. We then ran joint effort and stopped at the top to hang out at the chute. I had then asked if anyone had seen someone drive the backside line of the chute. Remember when I said we were gonna take it easy? Well, I had never done this obstacle at night and when someone said they wanted to see it done, you know I had to at least put tires on it and see how it felt. Everything felt pretty all right, and then at the top, it got a little weird, but I worked through it. Once I did it, it opened the door for others to make bad decisions. This is one of my favorite PNW wheelers in his drag axle TJ buggy. This guy is always in party mode and lines up without even thinking twice. It goes right up. You'll be fine. Yeah. I've seen, the last, right up, I seen yeah. the last guy just cruise right up He just right went up right up. I know he did. That's, that's what got you to go, huh? <laughs> hey, it did. <laughs> that's all it took to dirtbag Lee into giving this a try. whiskey on that throttle and it sends him off the line towards the drop. He keeps his cool and recalibrates and gets through it like a boss. All right then. Can't hear you doing cool guy shit. We finish up the night run but we have one last run to go to before we leave. Wheel and Wine and Whiskey and their camp took care of us the entire time that we're at Trail Hero. So we went out with them on our last trail ride before we loaded up to head home to find the iconic obstacle I've been wanting to check off my bucket list for years, the Soup Bowl.
someone didn't purposely leave this on the trail, but we'll pick it up anyway. And it all becomes trash. What trail are we doing? The maze. This trail's really cool. It's on the side of a plateau. And you're literally just going through a maze with the humps and bumps right on the edge of pretty much St. George. It's wild. So, views are epic. You viewers are epic. It's pretty neat. It's a little uh, further out than we normally go. We usually hit a lot of the trails that are like super close, but this was really cool. And I'm glad we get to do it with these guys. It'll be a good time. There is a reason why they call it the maze. The trail intertwines across the edge of a plateau that has an endless amount of incredible rock formations. We have done this trail many times, but could never find the obstacle, the soup bowl. Luckily, the Wheel and & Wine and & Whiskey crew knew exactly where it was. James makes like a spoon and hops right in the soup. But his front driver is not turning. He's either broke something or his hub somehow got disengaged. Yeah, it was disengaged this morning. For some reason, it came on a uh, unlatched, so I locked it and it was fine leaving camp. I wonder if it unlocked itself again somehow. It's this front driver one. Bronson's working hard for you here, James. You're not going under the buggy, are you? Oh, yeah. Yes, he is. Oh, why would you do that? Because it's easier. There's for no other way. I'll still get to it, my dude. So I said, hold the brakes. <laughs> I'm right? hoping you heard Brakes that. Are held and it's in park. Turn right. We need to check the hub. It's a sketchy Don't spot turn. to be doing this, but someone's got to do it. So I make sure he's in park and on the brakes. I crawl under the rig to access the front driver hub and give it a couple diddles and a good skiddly do, just like any good off road friend would do. Yeah, no. Let me know when you're clear. <laughs> Looks like the locking hub somehow unlocked itself, and crawling under there paid off. <laughs> Very nice. That was rad. Brunson, tell me about it. You come up this line, you get in this part called the soup bowl, and right here is where the issue is. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna try to fight through that issue. <laughs> All right. What's that? All right, Dan. The soup bowl is pretty iconic due to the amount of rollovers and carnage that's made its way onto the interwebs. The reason it causes so much chaos is it looks pretty point and shoot, and going into it doesn't look crazy. But the cracks and holes with a very slick exit waterfall has a way of twisting your buggy up, throwing you off of it if you don't hit it just right. I take it nice and slow and give it plenty of respect so I don't end up being another one of its victims, being able to complete it and check it off my bucket list. This is Jason with the Off-Road Podcast, Wheel and & Wine and & Whiskey. I never used to listen to podcasts until we started traveling so much to wheel. It made the trips about 10 times more enjoyable, and Wheel and & Wine and & Whiskey is our absolute favorite off-road podcast, keeping me up to date with all the current off-road news and current topics. My favorite part is they're as real as it gets. They don't just talk about wheeling, they live wheeling. And it shows, as he just blows right through the soup bowl. We start heading out of the maze, finishing up our last run for Trail Hero. This is hands down our favorite off-road event and it only continues to get better and better every year. We want to thank everyone who came and said hi to us this year and thank all of you who like our videos, comment, or even watch them. Especially all of you wrecking crew who have shown the extra support by subscribing. That being said, if you really like our channel 
and what we do, please show us by liking our videos, subscribing to the channel, commenting on things you like or don't like in our videos, and get you some rad wreck gear merch. Sponsored in part by Dirty Life Race Wheels, BF Goodrich Tires, Warren Industries, KC Highlights, and Axle Off-Road Helmets. Best way to support this channel is give that subscribe button a little skiddly do, diddle that notification bell, give this video the fat finger, and leave a dirty little comment below. Red Gear now has merch and buggy accessories at redgear.com, so don't forget to go spend that money that mama don't know about. As always, thanks for watching.